As I said in my Elite Skills Overview video, Elite Skills are extremely important in the Tactics Evolved season. That's kind of the whole point of the season. So I wanted to make a video talking about which Elite Skills I think are pretty good and which might not be that great. That way, anybody who hasn't played this campaign yet can have an idea of what they may want to focus on in terms of which Elite Skills to unlock and when. Let's get into it. All right, before we get started, do keep in mind that which elite skills you invest in is going to be based pretty much primarily on which commanders you have chosen to invest in. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go into excruciating detail on each skill. I'm just going to talk about which ones seem pretty good and which ones seem pretty bad. Unfortunately, I can't pull up the Ranger of the North Elite 2 skills right now because they are in training. But their Elite 1 is Light Armor. This is a pretty common Elite skill, so any other unit that has Light Armor, I'll just skip over that. Reduces damage received from enemy melee units. This could be quite useful, particularly against evil factions that tend to run a lot more melee units than ranged units. And for a unit like the Ranger of the North, whose entire job is to tank attacks, I think this is actually pretty reasonable for them. I'm also going to just touch on the racial skills one time, since these racial skills are shared across all units of that race. Men get army speed, manish attack, and then every single elite unit gets this discipline thing that says conscription time and cost is reduced by 10%. If you are struggling to afford these units, so for example, you have marshals as Rohan, who are already quite expensive, and their cavalry units, uh, in that case, disciplined might be pretty good to pick up. Otherwise, I think that for men units, the army attack is pretty considerably the best skill for the men race because attack bonuses in this game tend to be the best type of bonuses. Moving on to Cavaliers, we have Traveling Light, which has a damage reduction from enemy ranged attacks and a chance to evade the first two instances of damage. This evasion is going to be pretty hit or miss because so many people are running Pursuit due to the popularity of Gilgalad. Cavaliers also have Rise Up, which I think is one of the best elite skills in the game. This is going to be a 15% damage boost to your commander and your army if your army is composed of units of three different races. Here in a minute, I'll talk about how you can stack that with another set of Rise Up for a 30% damage bonus to your commander and army which is absolutely fantastic. Cavaliers also have Rupture, which gives them a chance to do extra damage and puts a bleed on the target. However, I think that Rise Up is by far the Cavalier's best elite skill. Sharpshooters, we have Light Armor. We'll skip over that one. They have Dispersion, like most or all ranged units. This is another very powerful elite skill in that it allows them to do extra damage against the entire enemy army every single round. Naturally, this is somewhat countered if people are only bringing a one stack of units in their army. However, most people are still bringing three stacks of units, so dispersion is very, very strong, and in my opinion, significantly better than lethal strike. Talk about Adunadai next. They also have Traveling Light, like I said, the avoidance slash evasion, is going to be pretty hit or miss, but their T2 elite skills are quite solid. Parry gives them a chance to reduce damage and then increase their next attack's damage. Pretty strong overall in my opinion. But if you are fighting uh, evil factions or potentially a lot of, of the wizard characters like Gandalf the Grey, Gandalf the White, Radagast, I mean, just kidding, who uses Radagast? Anyways, Anybody that's going to be relying on Madness, uh, other debuffs like Gandalf the White's extra damage taken debuff, stun debuffs, minus armor debuffs. There's a lot of really powerful debuffs in this game. They have Steady Will, which is like pre-riders, where every single round they have a chance to cure themselves of a debuff. Very, very good skill if you are having trouble with debuffs. Otherwise, I think parry is a pretty solid skill. In general, I'd probably lean towards Steady Will, though. Guards of the Tower have Divide and Conquer, which is a stacking damage reduction. This is extremely good on commanders that can carry the early rounds of fights, 
like Gandalf the Grey, really any white council commander that gives early debuffs, uh, even Arwen, anybody that can kind of carry those early rounds of fighting with other sources of mitigation. Really nice skill, makes guards of the tower very, very tanky. Shield training used to be ridiculous back when this would apply to your entire army, even if your guards of the tower were dead. So what people would do is they would put one command of guards of the tower with shield training, which would give their entire army a permanent minus 20% damage received buff. Absolutely crazy. Now this requires the guards of the tower to be alive. So I think that it's not nearly as good as it used to be. And survival crisis, not really a huge fan of this one either. Basically, if your guards of the tower die, then the entire enemy army is going to do less damage for one round, only one round. This could be useful if you're only ever going to run like one command of guards of the tower in your armies, but I really think that divide and conquer is the winner for those guys. Cataphracts have some pretty nice skills. They have blessed armor for the first three rounds. They have a nice damage reduction. Uh, this goes up to what, like 20, uh, I should be able to do the quick 25%, something like that. I believe so very very strong because the first rounds of combat are so important they also have armor break which i'm not a huge fan of it reduces defense when they hit something and then they have remedy that could be extremely good depending on which commanders you're using this makes them receive extra healing and anytime they receive healing they deal an additional source of damage so if you pair this with somebody like gandalf the gray Arwen, Radagast, anybody that has Galadriel even potentially, anybody that has a consistent amount of healing, this could be extremely good. In general, I think that Blessed Armor is their best skill, however. Sentinels, we have Light Armor, we'll skip that one. They also have Dispersion, and these guys are your second source of Rise Up. So what I wanted to take one moment to point out at this point in the video is that if you put one stack of sentinels and one stack of cavaliers and then let's say the rest of your command goes towards guardians since guardians are extremely tanky this will allow you to use like dwalin gimli any kind of big damage commander for the entire combat they are going to benefit from plus 30 percent increased damage because unlike that guard of the tower skill this skill is always active even if your Cavaliers and Sentinels die. So one of the most popular things you can do in Tactics Evolved is pick a really high damage commander, give him a bunch of Guardians, one stack of Cavaliers, one stack of Sentinels, say one command of Cavaliers and Sentinels, get that double rise up bonus. Naturally, your army is then composed of three races and you're good to go. Very, very powerful if you don't want to take advantage of Rise Up. They do have Dispersion, which is a strong option. In general, though, I think that Rise Up is the better skill for them. And then as far as Elven racial skills go, you get Army HP, Focus Damage Reduction, and, of course, Disciplined, like every single Elite Unit gets. Uh, the Focus Damage received is somewhat niche. It's going to depend on your server, how many Galadriels and Saurons are running around. Army HP is fine, however, not quite as good as Manish attack in my opinion. Heralds also get light armor. They get endurance, which is a damage reduction if they are stunned, inflicted by madness, or have the debuff on them where they cannot recover HP. And they have lethal strike as well. In general, I would lean towards light armor on these guys. However, endurance could be pretty good in the right situations. But since these guys are melee units, they are going to be taking hits and you kind of want them to be taking hits because then they get to counter attack. So they kind of want to get hit by melee units, in which case light armor, in my opinion, is perfect for them. Bow Knights also have light armor, they have dispersion, and they have sink or swim. This is a large damage buff, but it precludes them from being healed. Depending on what commander you're using them on, this could be a totally fine choice. In general, though, in my opinion, dispersion is the safe choice. Ram Riders get divide and conquer, just like Guards of the Tower do. They get counter blow, and they get protracted war. I'm saying these kind of at the same time because they're similar. So 
I do want to take a second to point out that when this says when this says upon taking six instances of damage, and it says it here as well, this means when they take that sixth instance of damage, they do this once. The way it's worded, you could kind of think potentially that for the first six instances of damage, this effect happens. However, that is not the case. And because of that, I think that Divide and Conquer is probably their best elite skill. As far as Dwarven elite skills go, we get Army Siege, Focus Damage Received, and of course Disciplined. In my opinion, unless you're only ever using Dwarven units for their Siege Damage, you're probably going to want to skip the Dwarven Siege and just go ahead and take that Focus Damage Resistance. This is kind of another reason that I'm not a huge fan of Focus Damage Resistance on the elven units because you can pick hp for elves and then focus damage reduction for your dwarven units and just have hopefully your dwarven units fighting things like saurons and galadriels and just let the elves enjoy the bonus hp that they have guardians get solid metal this reduces damage from ranged units could be extremely good if you have a very heavily populated server in terms of good factions where there are a lot of ranged units Heavy Shield, though, I think, in general, is probably their best elite skill. They deal less damage, whatever, their Guardians, they're not supposed to be dealing damage anyway, and they receive less damage, and this is actually a better damage reduction than Solid Metal, and it also applies to all sources of damage. So, Heavy Shield, Bueno, Solid Metal, and eh. But it's only a T1 elite skill, so if you need to use it for a little bit, go for it. And shield training, just like the Guards of the Tower, they're going to take more damage. They're going to protect your army by having your army receive less damage. However, once they're dead, this effect goes away. So in my opinion, definitely heavy shield for those guys, as their entire job is just to take damage. Master Throwers also get Blessed Armor. I said that was pretty good on Cataphracts because Cataphracts job is to tank. Not really as much of a fan of it on these guys because you don't really want your Master Throwers tanking if you can help it. However, they have Piercing Attack, which I think is quite solid. This is deals an additional amount of damage to a random ranged enemy when they attack melee units. This can be very, very nice against good factions, against Sunins. There's even like ranged Saurons running around these days, Gorbags. There's a lot of ranged units in the metagame right now. So I think that this is quite a nice ability. And they have post-strike response, which is a super weird thing. It says for the fastest unit, the next damage dealt is increased upon receiving damage each time. And it can stack up to five times. In my opinion, their best skill and the easiest one to build around is the piercing attack. So that's what I would recommend for them as well. And I'll try to knock out real quick the hireable units. Uh, this video is already a bit long, but oh well. We have toned body. This is going to make you have more wounded units and less dead units. Eh, not that great in my opinion. Then Bjornings also have a damage increase when the enemy army only has ranged or melee units. Kind of weird as most commanders are going to want to mix units. This could be potentially good against evil factions since they tend to run full melee armies. But I think that their best skill is Indomitable. They become stun immune, which is very handy. And they get a defense buff. If you're pretty much exclusively fighting evil factions, close quarters combat could be good. Indomitable is just a safe pick, though, because there are a lot of stuns in this game. Moving on to Oathbreakers, we have the same thing that Guards of the Tower and Rams have in Divide and Conquer. They have Significant Assault, <clears throat> which is a damage buff when you're attacking a target that is crowd-controlled in some way. Potentially very, very useful on King of the Dead because he just shuts off healing, which means this damage buff is always going to be in effect. And he is the best commander that you can use these guys on anyway. So I think that is quite solid. And then enemies that are subjected to Stunner Madness deal less damage and take more damage. In my opinion, if you're gonna be running these guys on King of the Dead, just take the 30% damage buff because he's always going to be shutting off the HP recovery, which means it's always going to be active.
Moving on to Bree Riders, we have Light Armor, we have Parry, and we have Finesse. Finesse is pretty niche in that it only is going to help them against sources of commander damage. I think, and this is just my opinion, that Parry is likely their best skill, although I could see an argument for Light Armor, but Parry can work against ranged units, whereas Light Armor cannot. So in my opinion, I think Perry is the safe choice for them. Keepers, there's really only one choice here, so I'm going to skip the other ones. This Heartseeker is going to give them a 50% chance every single round to gain follow-up. That means 50% of the time they're attacking twice, and these guys do a ton of damage. Just go ahead and go with that one on them, in my opinion. Seafarers get Light Armor. Oops, he did not mean to click there. They also get follow-up and they get remedy. Again, in my opinion, follow-up is one of the most powerful effects in the game. I think that's a very good option. You could potentially do light armor or remedy if you're going to be using these guys on a commander that heals a lot or if you're fighting exclusively melee units. But in my opinion, follow-up is just too good to pass up. Dale Watchman, Light Armor, probably skip that because they're a ranged unit. They have Dispersion and the weird Axe Thrower Response. Dispersion, fantastic elite skill. My opinion, pick that one up for them. Woses, you have Toned Body. This is just going to flip a little bit how many wounded soldiers there are. They have Dual Blows, which is very, very good. If your commander does not already have some consistent source of follow-up for them, for example, Haldir, there's always a chance for his range units to gain follow-up. Follow-up does not stack, so if you're going to be using these guys on somebody like Haldir, maybe you don't go for dual blows. They also have Savagery, which is a chance to attack all enemy units. It kind of turns them into like Noldor long shots without the part where like, you know, long shots just don't do damage some rounds and it's super awkward. So I think Savagery and Dual Blows are both fine options depending on what commander you're going to run them on. If you already have follow-up, obviously take Savagery. If not, you just have to figure out which one you like better. Moving on, we have Ents. I'm just going to skip over these guys. You should not be using Ents in combat anyway. Eagles, you're probably not going to be using Eagles in combat except for on a few commanders. Um, they do have Remedy though, so if you are using these things on Radagast, I don't know why Radagast is like the theme of this video, but if you are going to be using them, or on Haldir actually, we are just talking about Haldir, if you're going to be using them on somebody that can heal them every single round, Remedy could be pretty good. Uh, otherwise, Natural Power, just a flat damage reduction most of the time. So when battling on non-structured land, that should be most of the time. I think Natural Power is a very fair choice. Spirits of the Wood, same thing. You have Natural Power there. You have Forest Protection. I would definitely skip this. There's just not enough sources of poison damage in the game, in my opinion. And they also have Remedy. So if you pair these up with Gandalf the Grey, Arwen, somebody like that, then I think this is a fine choice. However, Natural Power is kind of the, sa the safe choice depending on which commander you'll be using them on. And we have Depths Defenders. These guys get Light Armor. They also get Staggering Blow, which gives a whopping 50% chance to stun an enemy unit after they attack. Quite nice. And then they have Battler's Bane. This is like the Erebor T4. Against enemy melee units, they get to do extra damage. This is going to come down to like which commander you're using them on and what you're fighting. If you're fighting a lot of melee units, Battler's Bane could be a totally fine choice, particularly if your commander already comes with stuns anyway, since you can't stun again a stunned target. However, if you don't have sources of stunned stuns, I think a 50% chance to stun things after each attack is exceptionally good. All right, guys, that was a bit of a long one. That's it for this video, though. Please let me know what you think down below, what your favorite elite skills are, and thank you for watching.